<laughs> Thanks for chatting with me today. I'm so excited to have you here. Of course. Um, so uh, we are here to have a conversation about you and all of the exciting things that you're doing with the purpose of in inspiring other young people um, to think like entrepreneurs and be entrepreneurial like you are. So uh, first of all, let's get everybody to meet you a little bit. And why don't we start with two truths and one lie about you? And then I'll see if I can guess. Okay. So I can sing every song from the musical Hamilton, word for word. No way. I'm a dog person. And I can say, hello, my name is Ellen in Spanish. I know you can say hello, my name <laughs> is Helen, because I taught you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> offended if you did not remember that. I wouldn't <laughs> anyway, have okay. Hmm. You can sing, okay. Hmm. No, that's not true. You can't yep. sing every song of Hamilton. That's the lie. No, I have every single word memorized because I watched it multiple times. <laughs> Oh my god i'm okay. more of a cat person than dog person so <laughs> oh wow so i learned something new about you today <laughs> aside from the fact that you are an incredible entrepreneur and super talented in so many other ways you're also a singer hey, I'm a i know and i sound very french when i say it i know <laughs> <laughs> please say that again spanish with a french accent hola me llamo Helen. i do sound very french at there's <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. That's great. You're multilingual, which is pretty awesome in my books. So anyway, let's get into a bit of our conversation about, you know, some of the things you're working on and who you are and what you're doing. Um, so like I said, we're here to inspire young people to think like entrepreneurs and basically activate their entrepreneurial brain as much as we can through examples such as yours. So first of all, do you think you're entrepreneurial or what does that even mean? Let's start with that. I mean, it's a very new term to me. I'm only in grade 10, so I don't think most people would consider teens to be entrepreneurial um, just because, you know, it runs in the same with the same terms as business and money. And that's all <laughs> it all seems kind of scary. Um, but I mean, after doing competitions like Technovation and, you know, following what UW is doing with Concept and Greenhouse Academy, those types of things. Um, I guess I could say I'm beginning to be entrepreneurial because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, on, being entrepreneurial basically just means that you're finding problems um, and coming up with solutions for them. Uh, very simple solutions, solutions that people can actually use and then creating a business out of that. Um, so I've started to do that. Uh, so I guess that that would make me entrepreneurial. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I find it interesting that you are, you say, you know, teens don't think of themselves as entrepreneurial because I think um, that, you know, teens are some of the most entrepreneurial uh, group of people that I interact with. And, you know, I also work with a lot of university students and I think that kind of is translating more and more now with the younger generations. So anyway, yeah. that's great. Um, what are you working on now? Tell us a little bit about, you talk about solving problems. So what problem are you solving right now and how are you doing that? Yeah. So I, I mentioned uh, Technovation, which is a girls coding competition. Mm -hmm. So my friend Leah and I uh, enter Technovation and basically the problem that we are approaching is the lack of communication between donors and charities. So mm -hmm. basically they don't have, charities don't have a way to share their financial situation um, with donors. And there's also not one place where you can get um, kind of feedback from, from uh, charities and, and donors don't really have a way to communicate with charities. So that's what, that's the, the problem that we were approaching. Um, and we realized that it was kind of applicable to um, a gift drive at um, a retirement home. So what we did is we talked to a few retirement homes 
and they told us that, you know, they've done gift drives in the past, but all the residents were getting the same present and it wasn't, it wasn't really catered towards them. Mm -hmm. So we decided to connect people in the, in the community, the donors who wanted to give something a little more personal Mm -hmm. uh, and connect them with residents at a retirement home. So we took this idea that we were working on for Technovation and we kind of put it into that context. So basically what we ended up doing is kind of coming up with this solution where we'd have residents input what they want from a list of five or six presents. Mm -hmm. And that would act as kind of a countdown for donors. So donors would go onto a website, they'd see what was left to be donated Mm -hmm. um, and then would donate accordingly. And so in the end, that'll translate to our our ultimate solution, which we call Ayudo. Um, And that will end up, so what that is, is you'll have charities who have a certain cause Mm -hmm. um, and they need to raise money for it. So they're going to give where exactly that money is going to go and how much they need so that it's giving a goal to donors um, and that will make donors more inclined to donate and then they'll be able to give them text and image updates uh, and basically have their own social media on that app it was a big journey but we ended up providing I think 50 presents to over to two nursing homes Uh, and we had lots of people in the community reach out and it was a great experience And so, you know, we moved on from that. We learned a lot from that. We started making the app. We started making a business plan. We made a pitch video Mm -hmm. and we submitted that to Technovation. And then just yesterday, we found out that we're moving on to semifinals. Um, Wow, that's amazing. (laughs) I didn't even notice. I'm super excited to see uh, what happens at the semifinal. And I love Technovation too. So I think it's a great opportunity for young girls such as yourselves um, to practice uh, these kinds of tech skills, entrepreneurial skills. So I did want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, discovering a problem is one one side of things, right? But the other side of it is learning to do all of the other things that are related to taking this sort of idea that you have so you now have the problem and now you want to create a solution but in order to create a solution you have to teach yourselves many things so why don't you run me a little bit through that learning process and you know what kept you motivated to keep keep learning and what are first of all what are some of the things that you learned and how you went about learning those things and what kept you motivated to keep going So one of the first things I, I want to note is that we had a mentor. So uh, her name is Cassie, mm-hmm. and she has her own business in Waterloo. So she was incredibly helpful in giving us kind of a roadmap of where to go um, and then helping us along that, answering questions and stuff like that. So the, the first thing I'd recommend is finding someone who can kind of give you some goals uh, and keep you on track. Um, and that can, you know, that can be your parents or that can be someone at school. It it can be anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, we found her through the Technovation website. Uh, but that, so that, I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, then you move on to finding a problem and that actually takes more time than you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Because even once you've kind of, you've got an an idea, you need to analyze that problem from start to finish. And you need to really know what it is that's wrong in order for you to get a solution. Um, so we spent, and that's why we did the pilot, right? To see where the actual problems lied. Okay. Um, so I think that was kind of our next step to see what was in the market and to talk to a bunch of different charities to see how they work and where the, the problems are. So we talked to the Red Cross, we talked to Women's Crisis Services, the young women, the YWCA, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we talked to the, the nursing homes after we did the pilot. And so you need to talk to people in that sector in order to know 
what's going on there. So a lot of time was spent just discovering what the problems were. Um, and then after that comes kind of desi designing your solution. Uh, so we, Leia and I spent a lot of time drawing out the app, sketching things, uh, thinking about what features need to be included, thinking about what features are the most important that we should put the, mo the most priority on. Um, and then once we did that, uh, we, kind of, we put it online, we did a prototype, we got people in our community to use it, we got our parents and friends to use it, uh, just to see, you know, what, whether it worked and whether it felt right. Mm -hmm. um, and then while all that's happening, we're trying to discover the business side of things to see if there are competitors, um, if this has been done before, and if so, what's wrong with their solution and how can we make it better? Uh, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a big process because it includes a bunch of different things. And then, you know, then you have to go code the app. <laughs> um, right. So I was going to say, you actually, both of you taught yourselves uh, coding too, right? How to code this app. Yeah. How, how did, did you do that? Um, Google is really helpful. Google is always really helpful. Uh, we started off with a quick introductory course to the language that we were using uh, on, on Khan Academy, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had a mentor. So we had someone that we knew who codes in for mobile development. So we would meet with him uh, about every one or two weeks to check in and he would give us advice on what to work on. And then the great thing about coding is you don't have to have everything in your head. So there's a bunch of resources online that can take you right to the end of making an app. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely depended on, on the internet. <laughs> both of us, both of us had programming experience. Um, just we, I'd taken a class uh, at school mm -hmm. and then I learned a bit of Python online and a little bit of Java online. So, I just, I wouldn't be afraid to try a quick two hour course just to see what it's like. And then that can get you started on, on a good path. That's amazing. So are you, are you using Python to build the app or? No. So we wanted to try something new this year, just, just to get a new experience. So we tried Swift on Xcode, which okay. is an iOS um, mobile development platform. So. Wow. Amazing. I know nothing about that, but I'm super glad that you tried this. And I, it, it sounds like you are pr getting pretty far along, right? Since you've made it to the semifinals. So that's exciting. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Um, the other question that I had, um, this is obviously a lot of work and a, a long process, right? So you started working on this, if I remember, was like three years ago, maybe? Well, we've been doing Technovation every year, uh, mm -hmm. but this particular project we've been working on since October 2020. Okay, that's amazing. So the the question is, what keeps you motivated to keep going? Because obviously you're both in school, right? You're both full-time students. Um, you both have uh, other interests like music, I'm learning today. Um, what keeps you motivated to dedicate, you know, so much of your time and energy um, to this particular project that you're working with Leia? Well, I mean, we chose, both of us chose a problem that we were passionate about. Mm -hmm. And as long as that's there, um, the hard times don't, don't feel as hard. Not to say that you don't have to put a lot of work in, but um, as long as you're working towards a goal and mine is to see the app in our community, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, when there are setbacks, it's just a, another reason for you to keep going. Um, and it's, it is fun. It's fun. Cause you get to talk to a lot of people, uh, who have some really interesting experiences. Cause I think with entrepreneurship, uh, people don't really have a set, a linear, uh, journey. So, there's people from all different parts of the world and from different uh, industries. And so I just have a lot of fun talking to those people and learning. And 
I mean, another great thing is I have a teammate. So if I'm feeling down, then she can be there to remind me why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's happened a few times, you know, because it's it's a long process. Absolutely a great point. Doing it with a with a teammate uh, is is great to have that support and the balance that you need when when you maybe are not at your 100 percent or vice versa. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, I'm so happy to hear all of this. And um, before we move on to some other questions that I have for you, is there, you know, if there are any uh, teens out there right now sort of pondering um, an idea or feeling like there's a problem that they feel um, strongly about, uh, they're not quite sure what to do. Is there an advice or a thought that you have for them as to, you know, how to get started? What would be sort of their first step? Yeah, I'd say uh, just go for it in the sense that um, you should just uh, apply to a bunch of competitions or um, accelerator for centers for teens, of course, but put yourself in places where people are doing the same thing. And they'll tell you, they'll tell you how to start. So you can join, you know, Technovation or you could join, I think there's something called Peace Innovators. Um, you can even look at Concept. I think they have ideas for people. Um, mm -hmm. And Waterloo is the perfect place to be for mm -hmm. that because they have, they have things for teenagers. So go onto the UW website and see what kind of uh, outreach they have. Uh, and just, I'd say, throw yourself into the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I agree. Those are all great uh, tips and great advice. So thank you for that. Okay, so we talked about uh, your entrepreneurial side and, you know, this awesome project that you're, you're taking on and, you know, all of the work you've been putting in along the way. But at the end of the day, you're a teenager like everybody else out there that's, you know, uh, in high school. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to give people a chance to get to know you as that, not necessarily just an entrepreneur. Um, so well, let's just chat a little bit about some of those things. Um, so what are the most boring things you have to do on a daily or weekly basis, if you will? Um, every day we have Google meets and it's not that I love, I love school. It's just that Google meets. For some reason, I, it's uh, just sitting in front of a screen all day gets really tedious. So I'd say Google Meets and then sending emails isn't really that exciting either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, ha I have to agree. I have to do a bunch of uh, those too, and it's getting tiring, I have to say. Yeah. So you emphasize that you love school, and that was actually one of my questions. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that? What is it about school? that you love so much? Well, I mean, I like learning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing that, that keeps me going. I have a lot of fun, you know, talking with my mom and my dad about things that I learned at school and then them coming in with new pieces of information and having a bunch of conversations at the dinner table that sometimes get very heated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it gives me a way to learn and have interesting conversations. I think life would be pretty boring without that routine too of, mm -hmm. of constantly learning new things. Um, and then I get to learn with friends around. So yeah, every, basically everyone you know is there. So uh, it's a pretty fun. That's great. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's a great answer. So thanks for that. But you got to be honest, other than the Google Meets, what is the thing about school that you don't like? Because there's got to be stuff that you don't like. Uh, I hate when it's super repetitive, um, boring assignments, assignments where you don't really have to think, um, like when you have to do 50 conjugations in French class, I think that really gets to me. Um, but then, you know, then I go to math class and we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So we talked about ex um, boring things that you're doing in a day or in a week. Uh, what about the most exciting things that you, you know, when you look at your day or at the week ahead, what are you most excited about usually? Uh, when I have plans to see my friends, especially now. Uh, I love going out on walks or walking uptown and stuff like that. It always just makes me happy to see them, especially now because 
I don't see them as often. Mm -hmm. So I really cherish the time with them. That's great. Me too. I miss my friends. This pandemic has made it really hard to see to yeah. see them, right? So uh, I agree with you. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be over soon. Um, okay. So we are all unique in our own way. Uh, what would you say makes you, you? So what makes Ellen, Ellen? I think I'm a weird mixture of, of tech and music. Mm -hmm. So those two things don't normally collide. Uh, but I have so much fun singing. I mean, I, I do it all the time. Uh, and it's even kind of interwoven into how I work and how I memorize things. And so music is a huge part of my life, even if I am going down that tech route. So mm -hmm. I think that as long as I hold on to that, um, I'm still out. I love the uh, art component in there because I do I do think that, you know, the, the well-rounded aspect is really important. In, in a person so I'm super happy to see that you're you're doing a lot of that as well and you also speak a bunch of languages <laughs> I speak French <laughs> the reason I said me amo Hélène is it's because the only it's the only one I remember <laughs> <laughs> I have to look at some of our old photos um and I think I have some videos of you you know more than that <laughs> I yeah Okay, well, we talked a little bit about learning. Um, so school is obviously one way that you, you can learn and find out new things, but how else do you stay informed? Um, so how, how else do you learn about, about things, right? You mentioned briefly, you know, Google and taking some workshops online. Uh, is there any like particular source that you go to for information or anything that you want to maybe recommend or share? When it comes to online, Khan Academy is my savior. I think it's great for anything STEMI for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think UW has, for math, I go to UW, the CEMC, they have some lessons for math. So I go there for that. And then the great thing is, is I have parents who are pretty well educated. So I also get to talk to them and I get a lot of my, my news from them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have the, the CBC news and BBC I downloaded my app. So every morning I wake up and read that. And I think it's just, I, it's not like I read it for an hour. I just skim through the, the titles and see what's going on, but it's good to know what's going on in the world. Yeah. That's but, funny. My Daniel, my son, who you know, he has his Alexa set up and every morning when Alexa wakes him up, Alexa shares the news. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great way. I never <laughs> thought about that. And, you know, I was like, what are you, wh who's that talking in your room? And it's like, oh, it's just Alexa telling me what's going on. That's, that's actually pretty cool. I learn. I learn from uh, from my teenage children and friends like you all the time. Yeah, who's that old woman speaking in Daniel's room? <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, as a mother. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So, what about what's the coolest thing about being a teenager in high school? I would say there's more freedom. Uh, maybe not during COVID, but you know, you get to go out for lunch and you get to choose your classes and there's more choice of friends. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you get to explore who you are. I think uh, people change a lot during high school. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not the same. So it's a good, it's a good place to, you know, become who you want to be. That's I don't think it ends in high school though. <laughs> if you're not loving high school, I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, it's not great right now. So, <laughs> so yeah, just find some, find some friends and you'll make your way through it. You know, exactly. Lean on, on each other, right? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Well, okay. Another question that I have is you talked a little bit about mentors that you've had through Technovation and working on your, your current idea. 
uh, what are other people that you look up to? Um, I look up to my friends. Uh, I mean, I, a lot of them are going through a lot just because they are teenagers. And so, you know, when I see the, the strength that they have to go through that, I think it, it gives me the, uh, I don't know, it, it inspires me to just keep doing what they're doing. So mm -hmm. I, I think I, I do look up to them. When it comes to, you know, famous people. <laughs> Which doesn't have to be famous. That that's a, that was a lovely answer. I loved it. Uh, I mean, I, I like Obama. I listen to his podcast. There you go. Now I know. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you have any books or well, you, just tell, you just told me about a podcast or you know, YouTube videos or you, YouTubers uh, that you recommend that you think are cool. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, entrepreneurship related on really any topic. Is there, you know, certain books or certain sort of mediums that you turn to? Yeah, uh, I've always loved to read. And so uh, maybe a couple months ago, I read a, a book called Wild Swans. Mm -hmm. It's really random, but it's, it's a book about uh, three generations of women in China. And I read it in a day and it's, I think 800 pages. So I was fully invested <laughs> Wow, it was really good. So if you want to learn about, it's a good way to learn about Chinese history as well. So if you want to learn about that, wild swans, it's top of my, top of my list. For sure. okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're down to my last question. Uh, and because, you know, it's summer holidays around the corner. Um, if you had no restrictions at all, you know, COVID aside, um, everything else aside, zero restrictions, uh, what would you love to do this summer? So for the, you know, two months that you're off school? Well, the, all of my family is abroad. So I have family in France, England, Tenerife, uh, Israel, um, I went to Switzerland. I lived in Switzerland for seven months, so I have a bunch of friends there. So if I had two months, I would probably do kind of a world tour and just hit all the places where my family and friends are. Ever. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me, Ellen. Uh, like, I, like I said, I think that you are an exceptional young woman. And I think I personally uh, have a lot of things that I admire about you. And I'm sure that uh, lots of other um, young people and people of all ages out there will, will be inspired by your story, which is why I wanted to share this. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. And do you have any other parting words for anybody? So what you like, I mean, it's definitely stressful right now, at least for me, because everyone's talking about university, but I feel like as long as you explore the things that you like to do, you'll you'll figure it all out. I hope. I hope. <laughs> right. I hope that's true. Well, the other day, I, I try. Uh, I read something, and uh, I don't remember who it was, but they said everything is an iteration, right? So you try something, it might work, might not work. Um, you try again next time, it's a better version of what you tried earlier, or something completely different. So I'm with Ellen on this one. Try it out. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Ellen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>